especially when I found the uh, the hole in a pre-packed meat bag is leaking. So you have to use something to clean your hands. I think separate yourself mentally, um, the physical action of sanitizing your hands also creates a barrier between you and the other shoppers. Did you know that uh, they're saying that uh, the Mars virus is partially caused by everybody using hand sanitizing stations within hospitals? Mm -hmm. There is such a thing as too clean. I feel some sense of relief to the extent that I don't have to deal with that portion, but sometimes the gate is even more intense. So when I went there, it's like going inside, inside. It was like so hard to breathe. And this coming out of that one and going out and see the light, it was very hot outside and wherever, but you feel free. That, that was a good feeling there. Um, I feel like I'm going to be arrested. They always make you feel guilty. Very, very rarely, but it's only if I get some sort of feeling that it's necessary. You know, I start off with a bad attitude, usually, just like, I have to go through this again. Well, I think the present is always a passageway. Doors and passageways always make me think of, of Janus, the god of doors and gates, because my grandmother's name is Janus. So it, that name always stuck with me as a kid when you would learn about Greek mythology and see Janus. And all the other names are, you know, strange and weird to an American child, but Janus stuck with me. I think one time I was, like, drunk, and I think I had, like, static electricity. I thought Jesus was carrying me into a castle. <laughs> I'm not sure what that meant, but it was cool. Oh, yeah, because I'm figuring all the guns, all the knives, all the explosives, they're probably going to be somewhere in one of those little boxes in a machine. You open this box, and you might see an angel. Um... I usually feel pretty nervous. I get a little sweaty. Felix doesn't seem to mind, though. But as soon as my uh, ID and last name are read, that's when I start to feel like people have uh, pre-existing ideas about who I am or where I came from or how I, how I feel on the inside. I think that's what they try to impose on us, that this is how we can help each other. I'm also kind of weird Disney 1980s like contraption. You go <laughs> on your body. It's like, okay, who made this fox from 2000 X Men or some shit? I don't know. She's like upset sometimes and she has to put her stuffed animal inside of there. And uh, we're waiting for the animal at the end. And it's, uh, it's now easy when it's with her. Hola. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm always doing that. You know, like. It's hard to recognize moments where you're not going through a passage because, like, how do you mark the beginning or the end when we're always moving forward? I feel like they only are, it's reactive, it's not proactive, so they are reacting to techniques of terror from 10 years ago. Even a high-tech appeal, you know, hey, look how 21st century we are, no microbes in our shop. Mm -hmm. There is definitely a physical feeling that overcomes me when I go through something like that, uh, or any of us, I assume, would feel something. In indignant and kind of also hoping that they're going to do something or say something that I, you know, find insulting or invasive so that I can, you know, be <laughs> feel uh, a little validated in the initial... Um, in the initial sense of violation that I entered the situation with. Whether it's in a third world country or a nice restaurant in New York City, I've always felt like my dick is cleaner than anything else. Hundreds and hundreds of archways, one after the other. <laughs> and I, we didn't know when it was going to end. So it was a nice walk, but at some point it was, it was uh, you know, we didn't know when it was going to end. But I didn't know for some time that I actually went through this so-called passage. But um, it, later I understood there was a, like, like a relief, sort of. Uh, I was watching that Basquiat movie with David Bowie and Jeffrey Wright. And uh, I think I was like telling some inner Basquiat, maybe it was the weed I was like smoking. But like, I had like number of wads of ones and tens and twenties in my pocket. The slave was like... Hey, that's like a lot of money in that trade. I was like, oh shit, I think I watched that movie too many times. I walked into your house and 
said hello to you, and then we walked into this room through that door, and then we got to hear what we've been up to for the past seven months, and that was cool. It was. I feel like everyone around me is very nervous. I feel the energy of like people um, making transitions, and that there's a lot of uh, vulnerability in that in that place. You know, the market used to be a place of much more than capital exchange, and now it is not a site of social exchange. Um, and so, um, to sanitize one's hands before going in, I think, um, you know, has the very real application of trying to prevent the spread of infectious diseases like influenza, but I think it also makes people feel separate in these... Um, these huge spaces that are unique to our, our time. You know, there's things where you, you, yeah, you start and it goes slowly and slowly and slowly, and it must be like living in an iron lung for like 45 minutes. That, that really does scare me. I would always have my headphones on and it would just be a tunnel of people passing by me and nothing mattered but me getting into that subway so that I could go back to Astoria. I guess like, all those diseases and stuff that keep popping up, um, and maybe the soap industry needs money, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you gotta wash your hands before you leave out the bathroom or do anything anyway, so I guess, you know, the phobia of, like, germs, maybe, I mean, germs have been around forever. And a little sad that I did it, you know, like, as though I almost want to have to be taken into that, like, back room and, uh, you know, be able to, yeah, I guess, to see how far they would go over, like, a, you know, when I know that I'm not a threat and that I, I haven't done anything and am not suspicious, like, oh, I'd like to see what it would look like if they thought I was a threat or decided that I would be that one example to take back. I guess I feel safer inside because of the fact that I went through it, but... It's also, whatever, I'm less comfortable in there. Maybe I'm safer, but I'm less comfortable. Because they sell shit, so you have to sometimes maybe clean your hands or even face, who knows. And I found a woman who worked at the customer service desk who let me use hers, and she complained to me that they don't provide it for the employees. I don't know. I'm like angry there, so I don't know if I feel safe. I feel like, oh, Maybe more angry sometimes. Depends on my choose and how fast everything take, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it always makes me feel like there's some really uptight person inside of that place that is afraid of what's coming in mm. and trying to guard themselves. Oh, I always feel like I've done something really, really bad and someone's going to find me out. The bi-directional gaze into in, of the present, into future and past, and that all passages, all um, gates, doorways, locks, um, exist in this delicate, um, intangible, limin liminal space. I, I mean, I take off my shoes way before you have to. Right, right. My, my, my belt is already on my shoulder. And before I even get to the x-ray machine that turns around, I already have my hand up way, way before, yards ahead of time. Um, I don't think bacteria is bad. I'm not trying to kill it. I'm pretty dirty. Yeah. Cut off from all my relatives during the war while I lived in England. And uh, no red carpet, no kind of like uh, immediate help from friends or family. So I was on my own for about five years. And that was my kind of passage through. I think, honestly, they're just putting them out there so that customers and the Department of Health will think that, you know, they're um, meeting all of their safety protocols and this, that, and the other, and maybe won't look back in the kitchen and see the roaches swarming. Buying extremely um, bad food and, and buying, like, five magazines and just, like, just having so much, like, nervous energy, and I just finally figured it out one time when I was sitting there, like, everyone was freaking out <laughs> around me in this way and I was like really taking it on 
where I feel in in in, in Asia was this uh, sense of cleaning and you know sanitation of everybody because they are fear of uh, illness all the time. You see people walking outside there. You see them; they have a the mask and they very conscious about that. Like when you have a flu or something, please use this. I'm always a little nervous that I left a treat somewhere in a pocket that I forgot about. And I'm always a little um, perturbed, not so much by security, but the way that the people sort of, um, in the way that people sort of react to the security. Like it is, it's going to happen, so just do it. I, they don't really recommend uh, what stage of your experience to do that for yourself, but I usually do it on the way out because I forget. Maybe just to like start your journey into the produce section. <laughs> I have no idea. Because I had a beard and stuff, so they, I guess, you know, uh, Middle Eastern, you know, they thought that I was going to kill a bunch of people for some reason. You know. <laughs>